Hello, this is Tony Burke presenting the first of a series of screencasts for construction study students at the University of Westminster about the use of the 3D modelling software Revit 2014. This screencast is simply going to provide some basics and fundamentals about what the, the software is used for, how it's used, and it will also introduce you to the, uh, the interface. In future screencasts, we'll be actually showing you um, the use of the software live and walking you through the steps to produce a basic 3D model uh, on the screen. Uh, as I say, it's based around the use of uh, a piece of software called Revit 2014. That's produced by a, um, a software house known as Autodesk. And in order to take advantage of these screencasts, you will really need to have Revit 2014 loaded on your machines. Fortunately, as a University of Westminster student, you can actually down a, download a free student copy. In order to do that, you need to go to this address. That's the Autodesk Educational Community. Um, you need to register as a student using your Westminster email address. You have to use your Westminster email address uh, to indicate that you are a bona fide student. You then go to free software downloads, uh, select the Autodesk Revit 2014 edition and download it. I should point out that uh, you will need the Windows operating system so if you're a Mac user uh, you'll have to make other provision uh, to enable you to download it. Um, further advice can be obtained uh, by looking at these books. We're fortunate also in that our library at uh, Marylebone uh, has uh, these books available as e-books, so you don't need to take out hard copy books. You can access both of these books uh, from the e-books uh, selection on the Marylebone Library search. Uh, so if you put in these titles to the library search, it should show you uh, how to access them. Okay, well, we're going to start by just um, uh, asking a basic question. What exactly is Revit? As I said, Revit is essentially software that enables us to build a 3D model of a building. Nowadays, we hear an awful lot spoken about BIM, Building Information Modeling or Building Information Management. And in its broadest sense, BIM... Uh, represents an approach to the entire building life cycle from the moment the idea for a new building is conceived right through to the design and construction process to the occupation of the building and on throughout the life of the building and what BIM does is it really sort of enables uh, data to be shared to be coordinated to be updated amongst everyone that's involved in the life cycle of the building be they clients uh, property professionals, architects, engineers, surveyors, construction managers, facilities managers, many others. So BIM is really about collaboration, it's about integration and it's about the, the whole life cycle of the building. It's not just about the design of a building. But that refers to BIM as an overall process. And obviously that's fundamental to the concept of BIM. But the process of BIM can't really work without effective tools. And one such tool is Revit. There are lots of other software packages, I should point out. Revit isn't the only one. So Revit's a software application that utilizes a 3D model to generate the plans, the elevations, the sections, the schedules, and so on, which represent the design of a building. But in doing so, BIM fundamentally changes the way in which buildings are designed. For centuries, even after the introduction of computer-aided design, CAD, buildings have traditionally been designed by producing 2D images on a sheet or on a screen. If we want to explain this in a little bit more detail, I'm going to take a, a, a really simple but very crude example. Supposing we wanted to, to build a, a really simple building, a, a bungalow, a single story building on a site. We might start by just sketching on a blank sheet of paper where the bungalow is going to be positioned on our site and roughly what it's going to look like. We might then start to generate some layout plans to show how the 
space within the bungalow is going to be used. From that we might develop some elevations which show in a little bit more detail what the bungalow is actually going to look like. We might develop sections showing exactly how the building is going to be constructed, what sort of materials we're going to use, how deep our foundations are going to be and so on. We might even ask a, an artist or a graphic designer to produce some 3D perspectives to show what the building will look like in, in more detail. We could even go further and build a physical model of the building. But with Revit, the whole process really changes completely. With Revit, we actually start by building the 3D model. So rather than preparing a set of 2D representations of the building, we actually build from the very start, or design from the very start, in three dimensions. And whether we're looking at plans, or sections, or elevations, or the 3D perspective, all of those representations relate to the 3D model. So having developed our 3D model, we can then um, produce our plans, we can, off, we can uh, output our sections, our elevations, uh, all from um, that single 3D model. So in any of the views of this building, if I change the position of a window or the, the type of door, that's not just changed in the elevation, it's changed in the plans, it's changed in the 3D representation, it's, it's changed in the schedules. So it's a fundamentally different approach to um, designing the building, which then provides a management tool which can be used throughout the life of the building because it contains data about everything to do with the building. So using a tool such as Revit the design really does change, the, the process really does change and this series of screencasts is going to take you through step by step the process of producing a 3D model for a simple building as you see here. So we're going to actually walk you through the steps to produce a 3D model for this bungalow. I know it's a very crude building, it's not very exciting, it's not very sort of uh, from a design point of view, from an aesthetic point of view, it's not very stimulating, but it does show you the basic steps. Once you've mastered those basic steps, then you will be able to develop yourself the skills that you need to utilize Revit on much more complex buildings. So in order to start that process, I'm going to just uh, briefly introduce you to uh, what Revit actually looks like and highlight some of the, um, the, the main components of the interface. When you open Revit on your desktop or your laptop, uh, the first screen that you're presented with will look something like this. If you want to start a project from scratch, then you would click on uh, the, uh, the new project and that would open a, uh, a blank uh, drawing screen where you can start a, a, a project afresh. It's worth also pointing out that um, over on the right hand side of this screen you see a link to various resources, one of which is a useful getting started video. So if you want to reinforce some of the things I'm covering in this screencast, I would recommend that you have a look at uh, that video because it does take you in a little bit more detail uh, to some aspects of the interface and, and how to use the software. But if you've already got um, a, a project on the go, then when you open the, the Revit software, uh, you will see the projects that have recently been uh, used on, on this package. Uh, so if we click on one of those, then uh, a screen such as this opens. And here we see uh, an existing 3D model of a block of four um, three-story townhouses. And I'm just going to use this screen to illustrate some of the key tools uh, and parts of the interface uh, so that you'll become a little bit more familiar with it. I'm going to start by highlighting a, a little toolbar at the top of the screen which is known as the Quick Access Toolbar. And if we expand that, this is what we see. Um, it 
simply just provides you with access to some of the commonly used commands. So whether it's open or save or undo or redo, um, you can access those tools because you, you need to access them frequently. Uh, there's, it provides you with quick access to them. The next um, component I want to show you is what's called the application menu and you access this by clicking on the large R in the top left corner of the screen and as you click on that a sort of drop down menu appears and again what you see here is access to a series of file commands not dissimilar to those which we've just had a look at on the quick access toolbar um, so if we hover over any of those um, applications then further menus open up you can see recent uh, documents that you've been working on again you can open new documents you can save documents uh, there's also buttons to export uh, to publish to print and so on the third part that I want to show you is referred to as the ribbon now the ribbon is a, a really important um, part of the screen that you'll be making use of a lot because it contains a series of tabs and panels as we see here let's just expand part of that um, you can see the various tabs across the top architecture structure systems insert annotate and so on we'll be exploring some of those in much more detail when we actually start uh, building our 3d model but the, the tab that's actually open here is the architecture tab and you can see that if you want to uh, draw a wall or insert a door or uh, insert a window then you would click on the relevant tool and you would use those tools to actually uh, add in components to our 3D model. So we will be making extensive use of that ribbon once we start building our model. Next I want to show you the properties palette. Uh, this is currently uh, on this view on the left hand side of the screen although I should point out that you can customize the view of the Revit screen and you can move these components around uh, depending on your own preferences but I'm going to stick with the default settings and the properties palette is shown there uh, surrounded in red if we expand that a little bit um, essentially the properties palette provides us with the properties of any element of the building uh, which we've got highlighted in the view in the middle of the screen. So if, for example, I was to click on one of the windows, then the properties of that window would appear in this box. Similarly, if I'd uh, clicked on a wall in a plan view, for example, then the properties of the wall would appear within this box, and I could edit those properties within this box. Again, this will become clearer when we start building the model uh, later on. The next section is the project browser and like the properties palette uh, we can adjust the position of this we can move it to the other side of the screen if we want to we can make it larger uh, but again I'm going to stick with the default settings. Uh, the project browser essentially just lists the views that can be opened from within the software. So currently what we see here is a 3D view um, but it shows that you can open uh, floor plans for any level, uh, the elevations, sections and so on. So whatever, whenever you click on one of those uh, it will open uh, the relevant view. The main area of course is the drawing area and this is where the action really takes place so whether we've got a plan view or an elevation view or a drawing, a 3D view open as we see here this is where we actually build our model. Um, so again we can navigate around, we can look at it from different perspectives, but we will see much more clearly when we start building the model in, the, in later screencasts. And lastly, um, just down the bottom of the uh, drawing area is what's known as the view control bar. And what the view control bar is, uh, is a, a, a tool that displays at the bottom of each view window um, various um, levels of detail, the scale, uh, and enables you to hide or isolate different parts of a view. So in future screencasts we will be building this model but I hope that's been useful just as a, a very very brief introduction. Thank you.